Welcome to another CCRN review video. This video is the practice questions part two for the renal system. Let's get started. Question 11. A young male patient is admitted to the hospital with a serum calcium of 15.3. Which of the following interventions would be appropriate? A. Rule out hypermagnesiema, then administer vitamin D. B. Emergent hemodialysis and rule out hyperphosphatemia. C. Rule out hypokalemia, then administer diuretics. Or D. Treat hypoalbuminemia. And the answer is C. Rule out hypokalemia, then administer diuretics. Hypokalemia is often associated with hypercalcemia, and diuretic therapy is one of the treatments for increased calcium. Thus, first ruling out hypokalemia will allow for the administration of these diuretics to treat the high calcium level. In the setting of low albumin, which is answer D, the calcium level would also be low, not high. Question 12. Which of the patients below will benefit from normal saline at 1 milliliter per kilogram prior to and after a CT scan with contrast? A. A patient with hypertension. B. A patient with acute coronary syndrome. C. An elderly patient receiving NSAIDs every six hours. Or D. A male patient receiving a beta blocker twice a day. And the answer is C. An elderly patient receiving NSAIDs every six hours. In this example, there are two factors associated with contrast-induced nephropathy, and those are the use of NSAIDs and the patient's age. Given this patient has both risk factors, therefore IV fluid hydration would help reduce the risk of contrast-induced nephropathy. Question 13. Your patient has developed acute renal failure secondary to prolonged hypotension from septic shock. This patient now requires hemodialysis and has a BUN level of 88 and a creatine level of 9.1. Which of the following would the patient have? A. High urine osmolality, high urine sodium concentration. B. Low urine osmolality, a high urine sodium concentration. C. Low urine osmolality, low urine sodium concentration. Or D. A high urine osmolality and a low urine sodium concentration. And the answer is B, low urine osmolality, high urine sodium concentration. The BUN to creatine ratio is approximately 10 to 1, indicating that this patient is most likely an intrarenal failure. The tubular membranes are damaged in intrarenal failure, leaving them unable to concentrate the urine or reabsorb the sodium. Question 14. A 41-year-old female patient is admitted with acute tubular necrosis. Which of the following is expected? Hypermagnesiema, hyperkalemia, and acidosis? B. Hypokalemia, hypertension, and acidosis? C. Azotemia, alkalosis, and hypocalcemia? D. Hyperkalemia, hypomagnesiema, and acidosis? And the answer is A, hypermagnesiema, hyperkalemia, and acidosis. In the setting of acute tubular necrosis, the patient is unable to appropriately excrete magnesium and potassium, all the while losing the ability of the bicarbonate regulation, thus leading to metabolic acidosis. The other answers do not meet these criteria. Question 15. A patient is admitted with a sodium level of 117 with an accompanying serum osmolality of 248. Which of the following IV fluids is contraindicated? A, D5W, B, 3% saline, C, lactated ringers, or D, normal saline? And the answer is A, D5W. In this hyponatremia scenario, administering a hypotonic solution is contraindicated. Given that D5W is hypotonic, this would further dilute and therefore lower the patient's sodium level. Question 16. A 55-year-old male patient with a history of chronic renal failure is admitted to the CCU with an acute MI. Which of the following is understood to have the highest risk of mortality for patients with chronic renal failure? A. Electrolyte imbalance. B. 
fluid overload, C, infection, or D, azotemia? And the answer is C, infection. For the patient with chronic renal failure, infection is the leading cause of death. The remaining choices are only complications from chronic renal failure, which may lead to mortality, however, not at the rate of infection. Question 17. Which of the following patients will need hemodialysis? A. A patient with hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. B. A patient with a potassium level of 5.8 and a normal ECG. C. A patient with a BUN level of 86 and a creatinine level of 3.6. Or D. A patient with acetylsalic acid, aspirin, overdose, with a BUN of 16 and a creatinine of 1.6. And the answer is D, a patient with acetylsalic acid, aspirin, overdose, with a BUN level of 16 and a creatinine level of 1.6. A patient with aspirin overdose should always receive hemodialysis before the damage occurs to the kidney. Choice C demonstrates a BUN to creatinine ratio, that of pre-renal failure, and only may need fluids. Choice B will benefit from other treatment modalities to lower the potassium level given the normal ECG. And choice A only needs potassium replacement, not dialysis. Question 18. Which is true when a patient is undergoing continuous venovenous hemofiltration? A. It prevents life-threatening electrolyte imbalances. B. It corrects fluid balance. C. Increases the oncotic pressure or D, removes immunoglobulins in autoimmune diseases? And the answer is B, corrects fluid balance. Continuous venovenous hemofiltration is not as efficient as hemodialysis, but does allow replacement of fluids as needed to the vasculature. It may indirectly prevent life-threatening electrolyte imbalances, although only by close monitoring. Choice D describes plasmapheresis, and CVVH does not increase oncotic pressure. Question 19. Your patient that you've just admitted has developed hypokalemia. Which of the following is related to hypokalemia? A. Acidosis and vomiting. B. Alkalosis and diazide diuretics. C. Diarrhea and hemolysis. Or D. ACE inhibitors and crush injuries. And the answer is B. Alkalosis and thiazide diuretics. Thiazide diuretics cause an increased loss of potassium, also allowing chloride to be lost. In the setting of chloride loss, the renal tubules increase their reabsorption of bicarbonate, often leading to alkalosis. Vomiting and diarrhea may cause low potassium, although acidosis, crush injuries, ACE inhibitors, and hemolysis raise the potassium level. Question 20. A 51-year-old patient is admitted to the ICU and is in pre-renal failure. Which of the following is associated with renal hypoperfusion? A. Urine sodium greater than 20 and serum osmolality greater than urine osmolality. B. Urine sodium greater than 20 and urine osmolality greater than serum osmolality. C. Urine sodium less than 20 and urine osmolality greater than serum osmolality. Or D. Urine sodium less than 20 and serum osmolality greater than urine osmolality. And the answer is C, urine sodium less than 20 and urine osmolality greater than serum osmolality. In pre-renal failure, there is no tubular membrane damage. Therefore, the tubules can still hold on to sodium, which results in decreased urine sodium. The tubules will also be able to concentrate urine, leaving the urine osmolality greater than that of the serum osmolality. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to be sure you continue to get updated content from Lifelong Nursing. As always, Learn everything.